Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. We are thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of all our praise today, God. Now we just want to tell you thank you, God. First, I give honor to God this morning, to my pastor, Pastor Thomas, to our first lady, Lady C. Each of you gathered here this morning, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Just one more time.
find nobody Looked high and low Still couldn't find nobody There's nobody greater Nobody greater Nobody greater than you
Truly is power in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise wherever you are. Come on, come on, lift your voices and somebody shout Jesus. Hallelujah. I said lift your voices and somebody shout Jesus. Come on, come on, say it like you know it. Come on, somebody shout Jesus. Come on, live in the valley. Brighten over the morning storm. The rose of Sharon. Come on, somebody shout church is all live. Somebody shout amen. Amen. We want to say happy birthday to brother Derek Allen who celebrated his birthday this week. Come on. Clap your hands and give God praise for him. We also thank God for our brother Marcus Beard who also celebrated his birthday this weekend. I mean this week. Somebody shout amen. Amen. We want to continue to lift up brother Justin in our prayers. Amen. Who realize his grandmother all Monday. Let's continue to pray for him and his family. Amen. Well, let us go into our series entitled Spiritual Warfare. Last week, I began this series talking about spiritual warfare. And spiritual warfare is defined as that conflict being raged in the invisible spiritual realm that is being manifest in the visible physical realm. Our key verse for this series is from Ephesians chapter number 6 verse number 12 when it, it states for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Last week we saw that it is a war going on in the spiritual realm. Last week, last Sunday, I talked and I preached from the subject caught in the middle. I informed us that this spiritual war in the spiritual realm is between God and his angels and Satan and his demons. But we are just caught in the middle. We discovered last week that every time God's, God makes a move, Satan makes a counter move. God's move and Satan counter moves are manifested in the physical realm. You can go back to our Facebook page or our YouTube page from last Sunday about that sermon called In the Middle. Please make sure you catch part one before you listen to part two this morning. The events that transpired on Wednesday exemplified the conflict being raged in the invisible spiritual realm yes, yes. that is manifesting in the visible physical realm. Yes, yes. On Wednesday, after Reverend Raphael Warnock's victory, and I must say, that he would be the first black U.S. Senator from Georgia, Amen. the first black Democrat U.S. Senator in, elected in the South, Amen. and he will become the only 
only the 11th U.S. Senator, black senator, to the U.S. Senate. After Reverend Warnock's victory and after he announced his victory, after we took a move in our history as a black race and as a nation, as we made a move, look what Satan did. The same day, right after Reverend Warnock announced his victory, after we took a move as a nation, after we took a move as the body of Christ, as we took a move as black people, and as we took a move as the human race, look what happened to our U.S. Capitol. They intruded the Capitol. You all, that was an example of the spiritual warfare in the spiritual realm being manifest in the natural realm. A move, God's move, and Satan's counter move. Now I'm ready for part two. Are you ready for part two? Fasten your seatbelt and let's embark to the spiritual realm. I'm going to be working backwards today as we read our key scriptures. And for those of you at home, I want you to go ahead and find your hard at Bible, hard copy Bible, because you're going to need it this morning. Is it all right if I do a little teaching this morning? Then I do a little preaching at the end. Go ahead, all of those on YouTube and Facebook, go ahead. I'm giving you time right now to go find your heart, that Bible. Because if you use your Bible on your cell phone, that means you're going to have to log off from seeing me. And you don't want to do that. Get your heart, that Bible. Let's turn to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6, verse number 20. Ephesians 6. Chapter number 12. Stand on your feet if you will. Ephesians 6, 12. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12. And we're going to be working backwards this morning. <clears throat> so follow me if you will. Ephesians 6, 12 and it reads this is our key scripture but it's something I want to pull out from this for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the dark of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Underline that. In the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. Let's work backwards. Let's go to Ephesians chapter number 2. Verse number 6. Beginning at verse number 6. Ephesians 2, 6. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places. Underline that. In the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's go to Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 20. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and sent him, seated him at his right hand in the what? Heavenly, heavenly places. 
Ephesians 1, 3. Be, blessed be the name, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the what? Heavenly places in Christ. Somebody shout amen. amen. Wherefore, my subject today is simply that. You can guess what my subject is. I'm going to be talking about heavenly places. Heavenly places. As we, as I give you the second installment of this sermon series, I'm going to talk about heavenly places. You may be seated. God, we thank you for your spirit, your anointing. We thank you for having your way in this place like you did last Sunday. Matter of fact, take us higher if you will. Have your way in us. Have your way through us, Father. We will give your name all the praise and all the glory. Hide me behind the old work of cross. Shield me in your blood. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. And we all shout it. Amen. Amen. Heavenly places. Throughout the book of Ephesians, Paul writes about the heavenly places. I think it is worthy and worth our time to discover what is the heavenly places. We should investigate what is happening in the heavenly places. Who is in the heavenly places? And what is in the heavenly places? So, Let's get right into it. What is the heavenly places? Hmm. Heavenly places, places simply means the spiritual realm. Spiritual realm and heavenly places, those words are interchangeable. So heavenly places simply means the spiritual realm. What is happening in the heavenly places? Well, we saw that last week. It's a spiritual war happening in the heavenly places. You may ask, who is in the heavenly places? Now, that's the question we really want to get into this afternoon. From the sermon last week, we should already know God, because God is a spirit. We saw that in John chapter number 4, verse number 24. God and his angels. Because the book of Hebrews chapter number um, 1, verses 13 through 14, let us know that angels are spiritual beings. So angels are in the heavenly places. We saw that last week. Satan is in the heavenly places and his demons are in the heavenly places. Now, Ephesians, we have read that because we saw this war going on. But Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12, that's one of our key verses, verses this morning. Uh, we saw that it's principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in spiritual places or in heavenly places. That, sh that shows us a spiritual war between God, the angels, and Satan and his demons happening in the spiritual realm. Now, the Amplified Bible puts it this way. I, I want to read from the Amplified Bible from Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 12. For those of you at home that can get to the Amplified version of the Bible, look at this. Ephesians 6, 12, Amplified Bible. It states, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. But against the rulers, against the powers, against the war, world forces of this present darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly, supernatural places. And let us know that it is a war going on in the heavenly places or in the spiritual realm. Yes, Lord. Somebody shout, it's a war. In heavenly, places. in heavenly places. Stay with me. I want to do a little teaching. And then I get right to where I want us to go. Who else occupies 
the heavenly places besides God, the angels, Satan, and his demons. Well, I need to show you that Jesus also occupies, or Jesus is also in the heavenly places. Let's read Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 19 through 23. Those of you at home, find it, go to Ephesians chapter number 1, verses 19 through 23. Elder Jones. Pastor, Ephesians chapter number 1, verses 19 through 23, and it reads, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Lord, who believe according to the working of, our mighty, of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his right hand in the heavenly place. Now where is God? Where is Jesus? Excuse me. He is sitting where? The heavenly place. Where? At the right hand, right hand of the Father. Where? In the what? Heavenly place. Now I say it again. Where is Jesus sitting? At the right hand of the Father. Where? In heavenly Say it like you mean. Where is Jesus sitting? At the right hand of the Father. Where? In heavenly place. Read, Elder. Far above all principalities and power, mm -hmm. and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. This let us know that even Satan power, y'all, is under the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Y'all not happy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Satan does not have more power than Jesus. Jesus has more power than Satan, and if Jesus has more power than Satan, the Bible let us know greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. If Jesus has more power than Satan, and the spirit of Jesus is living inside of me, it lets me know that I also have more power through Jesus Christ uh, over Satan. Read verse number 22, Amen. Elder Jones. Verse 22. And have put all things. Somebody shot all things. All things. That means all power, all principality, Satan's power, your bills, your sickness, your disease, all power is where, Elder Jones? Under his feet. Under Jesus' feet. Yes, sir. Read, <laughs> Elder. Jesus. I got you to read because I know you'll get happy with me. And gave him to be the head over all things to yes. be to the church, mm -mm -mm. which his which is his body, the fullness of him had fulfilled all in all. Now Jesus is spiritual because when he got up from the grave early the third day morning, he went to the heavenly realm. Hallelujah! And is sitting at the right. Jeremy, we're going up. Yes, sir. Use it, Lord. 
Romans chapter number 8, verse 34 through 39. I'm going to make you read your Bible. And I'm going to make you fall in love with your Bible. Romans 8, verse number 34 through 39. We need to see what Jesus is doing while he is sitting at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. Elder Jones. Praise be to God. Romans 8, 34 through 39. Through 39. Who is, who is he that condemneth? Mm -hmm. It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for Ooh. us? What, what he doing now? He's sitting at the right hand of Father doing what? Making intercession for us. My God. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Before I go any further, before I go any further, come here, Brother Jeremy. You don't mean Jesus. You know, I always have to be the good person. I'm going to be God. <laughs> get ready. Come in, come in, Elder, come in, Minister Jackie Jones, my mother in law. I want to show you what Jesus is doing while he is sitting at the right hand. You need to get on my right side. My, the right hand, get on the other side of Brother Jeremy. I'm God. Jeremy is Jesus. Minister Jackie Jones represents you. When we pray, we have to pray through the name or in the name of who? Jesus. Because if you, on your own strength, try to approach me, I'm representing God, I won't hear your prayer. Because I see you, I see your sin. I see your unrighteousness. That's why Jesus died for us and he took our place and he is standing between us and God interceding on our behalf. Watch this. So since we are in Christ Jesus, now we end our prayer in the name of Jesus as we should. But sometimes let's just say you hypothetically don't say in the name of Jesus because you know you just don't say it during one prayer. That's okay because if you are truly saved, you are now in. You are now in. Y'all don't hear me. You are now in Christ Jesus. But let's say that minister Jackie Jones is praying. She represents us. Say a prayer. Tell God, for real, tell God something you need. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just come asking you, Lord, to just heal my body right now, Father. I need healing from you, God. Stop, stop. Now she don't pray. She don't pray from a spirit, and I came up to the spiritual realm. Now, Jeremy, you're going to have to repeat everything she said to me. So what I do, I say, okay, she needs a healing. And, and I heard Jesus interceding, sitting at the right hand of the Father. Interceding for you and I, sitting at the right hand of the Father. And when I say, all right, since she done did it in the name of Jesus, I'm going to grant her her healing. Here you go, Jesus. Jesus gave it to the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit bring it to us. He is sitting, thank you. He is sitting. I believe we're on verse number 35. Yes, Elder. Who shall separate us Woo. from the love of Christ? Yes, sir. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. I did not this next verse. <laughs> Yeah. Nay, in all, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Say it again. Did not happen. Nay, in all these things. All means all, and that's all. All means. Say it read again, Elder Jones. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through through Him that loved us. Listen, you can conquer the tricks of the enemy. You can conquer the plan. Read verse number 48, I mean 38 for the elder, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded yes, sir. that neither death yes, nor sir. life, nor angels, nor principalities. That means evil principalities. Say the tricks, read. Nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. But nor height, nor death, nor any any creature, any other creature shall be able to separate us from the 
love of God. Moving y'all, hallelujah. Now that you all can separate us from the love of God, if you are standing in Christ Jesus, he's innocent on our hell. Now that they can separate us from the love of God. Why? Because we are more than a cover. I want to tell somebody in the sanctuary, and I want to tell somebody looking at me, you can overcome it. You can overcome it because we are more than conquerors. Somebody say, I'm more than a conqueror. Now let's move on. Now God, the angel, Satan, the, the, his demons, and Jesus are in the spiritual realm. Now who else is in the spiritual realm? Well, I'm going to tell you this. Why? Oh, you. You are also in the spiritual realm. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter number 2. Verses 4 through 6. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2. Verses 4 through 6. Pastor, Ephesians, 4, Ephesians 2. Verses 4 through 6. But God, who is rich in mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Mm -hmm. Even when we were dead in sin has quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved. Yes, sir. And have raised us up together uh, wait, wait, go back. And raised who? Us up. <laughs> that includes you and I. Yes, sir. Read, read. Continue read. And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when Jesus got up from the grave, although you were dead in your sins, once you confess and believe in the Lord Jesus, when Jesus got up, not only did he get up, you got up. And you weren't even born yet, but you got up. And when Jesus went to the heavenly realm and ascended at the right hand of the Father, he took you and I with him. But we are positioned in the spiritual realm. That's That's good. <laughs> we are located in the physical realm. Yeah. Yeah. But we are positioned. Position. We are also sitting at the right hand of the Father. Yeah. We are positioned in the spiritual realm. My Lord, my Lord. Thank you. Before you were saved, you were only limited to one place, the physical realm. Mm -hmm. Before you were saved, you were only limited to the physical realm. Mm. That's why we can't get the unsaved to understand spiritual things. Amen. My God. Because their knowledge, their understanding is only limited Amen. to the physical realm. Amen. I Paul, uh, Paul said, I believe Paul said, it, it is the foolishness uh -huh. of the cross and of the gospel and all that. It, 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 it's foolish for the sinners to believe that Jesus, who was 100% man and 100% God, got up from the grave. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Yes. It's foolish for sinners to believe that although we are in a pandemic, we are still worshiping the Lord our God. Because they are only limited to the physical realm. Yes, yes. Before we were saved, you were only limited to the physical realm. Yes, yes. But once you got saved yes. and opened up your spirit, I talked about that soul, spirit, and body on last week. So once you got saved, God, although we are still located in the physical realm, he transported our spirit to the spiritual realm. And now we are sitting at the right hand of the Father along with Jesus the Christ. That's why we say we are spiritual beings having a natural experience. Because although we are located physically on the physical realm, our spirit is located in the spiritual realm. I'm going to talk about in this series about praying in the spirit. And the Bible let us know that we don't know what we ought to pray for. But the spirit 
the spirit that when our spirit was located in spiritual places, the Holy Spirit let our spirit know what we should ask God for. So we are located in the physical realm, but we are positioned in the spiritual realm. That's why we can see further than the world. We should be able to. Do y'all hear me? Right now, I want you to clap your hands and give God praise right now. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Because you're not only located in the physical realm, but you are positioned in the spiritual realm. Before I close, allow me to tell you one more occupant in the heavenly places. And this is where I really want us to be. Ephesians chapter number one, verse number three. Ephesians one, three. I really want us to get this because I'm really going to dig at this point. Y'all, I'm about to get happy. <laughs> Read out the Jones for me. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Read it again. Mm. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. One more time. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. With all what? All spiritual blessings. With all what? You first got to be blessed in the spiritual realm before you bless in the physical realm. So we are also positioned in the spiritual realm and we got spiritual blessings yeah. in the spiritual realm. Yeah. Remember now, spiritual warfare is the conflict, the rage in the spiritual realm and, and also being manifest, that is being manifested in the physical realm. Yeah. So how do we get our spiritual blessings that are in the heavenly places to manifest in the physical realm. There are three things you need to know as it relates to getting your spiritual blessings to manifest in the physical realm. Grace, faith, and works. Grace, I'm going to dig into that. Grace, faith, and works. Say it with me. Grace, faith, Words. Say it again. Grace, faith, and words. Type it in the comment box. Grace, faith, and words. Yes, yes. I told I told this at Bible study the latter part of last year, but I really want to dig into it because I really want us to grasp this. You have to understand. Moving forward, we talk about heavenly places now. You cannot understand the physical realm without me um, understanding the spiritual realm. So we already see that God, Satan, and the angels, the demons, Jesus is sitting in the right hand of the Father. And we are also positioned. All of us are in the spiritual realm. And we have spiritual blessings in the spiritual realm. But now we're trying to figure out how can we get our spiritual blessings to manifest on the physical realm. Grace, faith, and words. Yeah. Listen to me. Every... I'm going to explain it this way, then I'm going to get into some theology. Every other Friday, I get direct deposit. I get paid direct deposit. That's this coming Friday. Thank you, Jesus. I get paid direct deposit. Which means my check is automatically deposit and deposited in my checking account. The direct deposit transaction has nothing to do with me. That transaction is between Lincoln County, between their third party, and my bank. Oh my God. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing, you all, to do 
with me. Every other Friday morning, I have to do some work. I check, and the, my work is by me checking. That's some force, so that's work. I wake up, I tell the Lord thank you every other Friday. <laughs> I wake up, tell the Lord thank you, kids lay to see, and I get up, I, before I even put my foot on the floor, I get my cell phone and I do some work. I check my bank account because I have the faith that Lincoln County has deposited my check into my checking account. When they make that transaction, I told you all that has nothing to do with me. That's grace. I have to do some work, works, and check my online banking. But I have the faith in Lincoln County and in my bank that my check, it will be in my banking account. And therefore, I can make withdrawals, pay bills, give Lady C some money to get her hair done, use my banking account and all that good stuff. Because every man is supposed to take care of that woman. Now, what I want you to see from that, you all, you have a spiritual bank account with your name on it. You got to go in the spiritual realm. I gave you an illustration from the physical realm, but I want to uh, relate this to the spiritual realm. Hear me out. You have a spiritual bank account in the spiritual realm with your name on it. It has your social security number on it, if you will. It got your name on it. It got your address on it. It has your information on it. You have a spiritual banking account in the spiritual realm. Yes, yes. Amen. Everything Everything. that you would ever need has already been deposited into your spiritual banking account by God. It has nothing or it had nothing to do with you. Somebody shout grace. I want you to get this, you all. I'm a, I know being a little redundant, but I want you to get it. You have, since we are spiritual beings, having a uh, uh, natural experience, and we are saved, and we are in our spirits in the spiritual realm, you need to know that you have a spiritual bank account with your name on it, and everything Already been deposited 
movement in the spiritual realm. By God, that's grace. God started with the ending of your life story and worked his way, worked his way to the beginning of your story. And he did all of that before the foundation of the world. Somebody shout grace. grace. Now the question becomes, how can we get access to our spiritual account while we are in the physical realm? Somebody shout faith. faith. Now, Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6, Elder Jones. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 6. We have already dealt with grace. Now we need to deal with faith. And you're going to understand this better by and by. Hebrews 11, 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. You got to have faith to please God. Amen. Read the next one. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. He is a what? A rewarder uh -huh. of them that diligently seek him. So if you seek the Lord, he will reward you. He would, But you got to have faith. This is faith. I'm, in other words, God said, I'm going to give you everything that I, have, that I have already deposited in your spiritual account. When you diligently seek my faith and you have faith in me, I will reward you. I will give you um, things that has already been deposited in your spiritual account. I am a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Now that's faith. But let's go up to verse number one of Hebrews 11. One. Hebrews 11. One. Now faith mm -hmm. is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Read it one more time. Now faith, now faith is the substance. Is the substance. Of I, I don't mind that word substance. How about that word substance? Read on. Of things hoped for. Okay, so faith is the evidence of um, faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That means everything in the spiritual realm. All right. The evidence, the next part says, the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of the things that we cannot see, smell, taste, and use our five yes, senses sir. in the physical realm. Yes, uh -huh. So the things that are the substance in the spiritual realm, yeah. we cannot see it, mm. we cannot smell it, wow. we cannot taste it, wow. we cannot touch it, we cannot hear it in the physical realm. There's no evidence of the things that are already deposited in the spiritual realm, there's no low, um, evidence in the physical realm. Yes, yes. But you have to have faith in the substance. Yes. Now I want to go somewhere with this because I really want you to see this. Now faith is the substance. My Lord. That's why I really want you to see. Your faith is in direct relationship with the person who has the substance. My God. What I mean by that, your faith is in direct relationship with the person who has the substance. Forget about the substance. Mm -hmm. Let's think about the person who has the substance. Uh -huh. What I mean by that. Now, if a crackhead comes to you and say that I'm going to give you $500, and you know that crackhead, and I probably shouldn't use that terminology, but you know that crackhead is broke. Will you have faith in his word? No. Huh? No. No. Because you don't have the faith in his integrity. Mm -hmm. Although he said he's going to give you some substance, mm -hmm. you don't have faith in the person who has the substance. Mm -hmm. So you, we're going to have to have faith in God okay. who has the substance. Elder Lampkin, if I tell you that I'm, although you don't see it right now, if I tell you that I'm going to give you some money, will you believe me? Mm -hmm. You will. Why? Because I'm a man mm -hmm. on my what? Word. Y'all yes. follow me? Right. So since I am a man of my word and I always keep my promise, she know that although I have told her that I'm going to give her something, she don't see it. She believes what I said because I am a man of my word. Although you don't see the substance that God has promised you, hallelujah, you got to have faith in God 
and know that God is a man of his word. So your faith is in direct relationship with the person who has the substance. Although I don't see it, although it has not manifest in the physical realm, I have faith in the person who said he's going to give it to me. Knowing that God is not a man that he shall lie, neither is he the son of man um, that he should repent. If he said it, shall he not what he do it? Although God has already deposited everything we need in the spiritual realm, um, that we would ever need in the spiritual realm, that's grace. But God said, although we are located in the physical realm and although we don't see it, God wants to know when you have faith in his word. When you have faith in him, when you still believe that he will do it. When God is of what it looks like down here, when you have faith in the man who has the substance. Now, how, how do I get my spiritual blessings, you all? How do I get my spiritual blessings, my spiritual blessings to manifest in the physical realm? I know my blessings already have my name on the spiritual realm, but how can I get it to manifest in the physical realm? It called faith. Faith give you access to your spiritual account. It's like grace. It's just like faith is the pen number of your debit card or your bank card. Hallelujah. It's just like that's what it is. grace is. I mean, faith is. Your faith is like the pen number. And God said, I want you to have faith. Hallelujah. And the pen number. I want you to have faith in Jesus. The whole world, you don't see it. I said, although you don't see it, you know that God is going to do it. So faith give us access to our spiritual blessings. One theologian said, faith is acting as if God is telling the truth. And we know that he is. We know that he's not going to lie. But my faith said, I'm acting like it. God is already telling the truth. I wish I had a happy, radical church up in here. So God, everything that you have already deposited in, my, in the spiritual realm, by grace, down here in the earthly realm, I'm going to have some faith, and I'm going to act like I already got it. I'm going to act like it's already mine. I'm going to act like you, you're already telling the truth. Somebody shout faith. So you cannot be a believer in Christ and not have faith. You cannot be a believer in Christ and not have faith. Because my faith is telling me God although is no evidence the physical realm, I got faith in you. I got faith because you have my substance and while I am located in the physical realm, but I'm positioned in the spiritual realm, I'm going to act like I'm going to act like act like act like the truth and some people say you live in a lie that's not living a lie my faith is telling me I'm acting like it God is telling the truth. Somebody shout faith. faith. Although my banking account doesn't does not show that I have much money, I act like I have money. And while I'm at that, I'm having faith that God is going to give me the substance that I need. Some people say I'm sick in the physical realm, and you may be sick, but God say, all right, now, now, it, it's a thin line, because I don't want you to tell a lie, because if the doctor say you're sick, we need to go ahead and um, acknowledge that you are sick, but you got to act like you're healed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody shout faith. Faith. Thank you, Lord. 
Now I want to be clear. When I'm talking about grace, y'all understand grace, right? Yes, God has already deposited everything we will ever need in our spiritual account. Yes, Lord. Faith. We're going to have to have faith in the person who has our substance. That's God. Yes, Lord. And faith is acting like God is telling the truth. Uh -huh. yes. Now, the next part we're going to have to deal with is words. Yes, yes. Now, I want to be clear as I talk about words hmm. because it's a thin line between our words. Yeah. Let's go to Romans chapter number 11. Verse number 6. Somebody shout, this is good. This is good. Romans 11, 6. We're going to get our blessings, y'all. Amen, amen. I said, we're going to get our blessings, y'all. Say that, say that, say that. I said, we're going to get our blessings, y'all. Yes, yes, and I'm going to teach you how to get everything God has for you. Although we're on the spiritual warfare, God said, I still got some blessings for you. Romans 11, 6, as we talk about words. Elder Jones. Romans 11, verse 6. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, Work is no more work. What I mean, what the Bible is saying this, saying by this, you do not work to get grace. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you cannot work to obtain work to grace. To if you work to get grace, it's no longer There's grace. No more grace. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Amen. That's why I told you grace, by grace, God has already deposited everything we need in the spiritual realm, and it has nothing, nothing. to do with you. Notice how I'm giving it to you. Grace, faith, words. I did not say grace, words, faith. <laughs> I said grace, faith, words. Because you cannot work to get grace. You cannot work to get everything that God has for you. Because if you work to get everything that's in your um, spiritual banking account, it's no longer grace. And you should thank God for that. Because that means every time you sin, you disqualify yourself. Hallelujah. From getting every blessing that you have in the spiritual realm. That means every time you sin and you swap your debit card or your bank card, it says insufficient funds. Because you mess your own self up because you try to work to get it. And but God, who is rich in mercy, rich in grace, said, you don't have to work for this, baby. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So words, faith, I'm sorry, grace, faith, words. Grace, faith, words. You cannot work to get grace. That's why I put faith. Grace. Uh -huh. Faith gets your grace. Uh -huh. All right, where well, work come in at? Works come in at. James chapter number two, verse number 17. Let's read that. Uh, I'm about to say, let's read that, James. Let's read that, Elder Jones. <laughs> James chapter number two, verse number 17. I'm working this Bible today. James 2 17. Yes, you are. James chapter two, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it has not worked, is dead. Say it again. Even so faith, if it has not works, is dead. So what faith is going to do is, I cannot work to get grace, but my faith is going to show up in my feet. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and if I act like God is telling the truth, that's faith. That means I'm going to walk. walk. <laughs> I'm going to work. That's activating my faith. And once I start activating my faith, my faith gets, um, gives me grace. I said it again. My faith, grace, faith works. I cannot work to get grace. So what, what's in the middle is faith. And since I'm going to start with faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Since I have faith in the grace. Since I have faith in God who has deposited everything I need, my faith is going to show up in my feet. My faith is going to show up in my words. 
Let me give it to you this way. If you go to the car lot and you know you won't have any money to get that car, but you go down to the car lot, you sign the paper, and you do a, you, you, sign, you got the faith. Somehow, some way, something don't come through, and you do the work. You sign the paper. You sign the paper saying, I'm going to get this car. No one's going to I don't know how I'm going to pay for this car. But you have faith that you're going to pay the car off. So what you don't do, you don't work your faith. So words activate my faith. My faith access grace. My work activate my faith. It's kind of like things that work go hand in hand. My work is going to activate my faith. If I believe God is going to do it, I'm going to work like God is going to do it. That's faith. And my faith is going to access my as has grace, everything that's in the spiritual realm that God has for me. My God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Somebody shout words. Words. Now, Elder Lincoln, this is only a demonstration. Only. Somebody shout only a demonstration. Only a demonstration. Now, Elder Lincoln, before I gave you all of this, I asked you, I said, Elder Lincoln, if I tell you that I'm going to give you some money, will you believe me? You didn't see it, did you? You don't see no money on me. I didn't walk, although I look like a million dollars. I did not get You don't see a million dollars, right? But you believe that I have, God has already provided the money that you need. That's great. But your faith is telling you, although you don't see it, you believe it. Now, Ed come here. All right, then. You see? Wait. Can you put the camera on her? I know that's a lot of work, ladies. Say. Can, can you put, put a camera on her? Sit back down, Elder Lampkin. They don't get the cameras. <laughs> Hold your Bible, because you had your Bible in your hand. Somebody, while we get the camera right, somebody praise God for my wife. My camera woman. <laughs> now, Elder Lampkin, you, God has already provided. That's great. Yeah. This has nothing to do with you. Hallelujah. Y'all got to get this demonstration. It has nothing to do with you. But you have the faith that although you don't see it, yeah, yeah. that I'm going to give you yeah. some money. Yeah, yeah. And so I told you, come get it. She had to stand up. That's work. Because uh -huh. she believed that she's going to get something. Yeah, yeah. Come on, get it. She put down the Bible. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's work. And she walking. And she walking, she working. She walking, she working. She coming by faith. She coming by faith. She coming by faith. Come on. She coming by faith. And when she get up here, grace has already provided. And I gave her exceedingly and abundantly above all she asked or think. Don't miss it. I said, I gave her exceedingly and abundantly above all she asked or think. In the heavenly places. Somebody shout hallelujah. And as I close. My brothers. And my sisters. It's a war. In the spiritual realm. But God says since we are caught in the middle. He has provided. Every spiritual blessing that we will ever need. I heard someone say that when we get to heaven, it's going to be an angel up there to show us all of the spiritual blessings that we could have had while we were on earth. However, because of our ignorance, they were not manifested. I was thinking to myself, Elder Jones, on Friday, Lord, why are some people not receiving their spiritual blessing? And the Lord revealed to me, for the most part, it is because 
They are not living a life for him. Some people think that they can receive the blessings from God and not live a life for him. For some, it is because of their lack of knowledge of the word of God. For the Bible declares that my people perish for the lack of knowledge. And for some, they do not have the faith that God can do it. Therefore, their faith does not show up in their feet. Finally, the Lord revealed to me the reason some people's spiritual blessings are not being manifest in the physical realm. It is because the moment that he blesses them, he knows that they will run with the blessing and forget the blessor. You will get what you want and you will stop doing what you were doing before you get God what you wanted. You will leave him and the church. However, I come to tell you that the Lord wants to bless you. Y'all don't hear me. I said, I come to tell you that the Lord wants to bless you. Wait one minute, Justin. Let me find out what key I'm in because I don't know what key I'm in. I feel like preaching. You catch me at the end because you know I'm out of key. The Bible declares in Psalms 84 verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory.
you got to have faith in God. Although you don't see it, you got to know that he's working. Although you don't feel it, you got to know that he's working. And once you act like that God is telling the truth, your faith is going to show up in your feet. I'm going to close with this. But the Lord wants to know if he blesses you. If he blesses you, will you still worship him? If he calls everything that's in the spiritual realm to manifest for you in the physical realm, he want to know will you still love on him? You all, while I was driving the wall walk on Friday, the Lord said, the ravens, I have blessed so many people with things. And once I blessed them, they forgot about me. And God said, I'm looking for a remnant of people. They said, God, when you bless me, when you let those spiritual blessings in the heavenly places to manifest in the physical realm, I still worship you. I still bless you. I want to tell you, God wants to give you houses that you did not build. I said that. He wants to bless you. He wants you to prosper and be in good health. But he knows the moment that he blessed some of us, we'll get arrogant. We'll get the big head. We'll forget where we come from. But God said, I want you to have faith. I want you to have a heart after me. And if you have a heart after God, all of the spiritual blessings that he has just for you, what manifest for you. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven. Yes, you can get a crown when you get the glory. But there's some things that God has provided for you that he wants you to have while you're down here on this earth. The Bible declares that in the book of Deuteronomy that you are blessing the city. You're blessing the field. He'll make your basket to run over. You shall go up and not down. That's the word of God. And I want every spiritual blessing that the Lord has for me. Although I don't see it, God, I'm going to reach up and grab it. And I'm going to pull it down. I'm going to reach up and grab it. And I'm going to put it down. Many people don't understand that you can prophesy in the spiritual realm with your body language. And when you reach up, that means I'm grabbing every spiritual blessing that God has for me. And I'm putting it down to the earth of the realm. I dare you, wherever you are, to reach up and put it down. I said reach up and pull it down. Come on. Reach up and pull it down. You got to do it with the power that God has placed in you. Reach up and pull it down. It's mine. I said it's mine. God, whatever you have for me by grace, my work activate my faith. Faith give me access to what you have provided by grace. It's mine. Lift your hands and worship. Lift your hands. Somebody shout, it's already done. Somebody shout, it's already done. What you have been praying for, it's already done. Somebody shout, it's already done. I'm trying to wait till you get in your spirit. I'm trying to show you this thing that you've been praying for. You got to believe that it's already done. Somebody shout, it's already done. Because he's a way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, 
That's who you are. He's a way maker. Miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That's who you are. I said he's a way maker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. Light in the darkness. My God. That's who you are. It's mine, it's mine. I said it's mine. Wherever you are, as we worship God through something, I want you to walk around your house, activate your faith. And I want you to say it's mine, it's mine. And then I did, I want you to say it's already done. I want you to shout it's already done. Come on. Get out your seat. Get your cell phone in your hand. And walk around and say it's already done. Come on, it's already done. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. My children are healed. My children are delivered. God, you're gonna bring peace to my life. You're gonna give me the strength that I need. Come on.
moving into a part of our service that we are doing first fruit that we are sowing at least $210. Some people have already sown last Sunday. Some are going to sow this Sunday. Some are going to sow either next Sunday, fourth Sunday, fifth Sunday. But you need to make sure you sow your first fruit. And I told True Friendship to make sure you wait until we get in the flow and God moves in this atmosphere to sow your seed. Give me information that's on your screen. Elder Jones is coming to pray over our first fruit and give us the benediction. Hallelujah. Even though I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. He never stopped. He never stopped working. Hallelujah. He never stopped, y'all. He never saw working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. God would never stop. He would never stop working. Prepare your first first fruit offering, Elder Jones. Sing it. 